What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another live stream. And today I got two esteemed special guests with me. Uh, first of all, my co-D from the show, Talk is Cheap. Look out for that. Just came out today, by the way. Laurie in the building. What's happening, bro? I'm all right, bro, man. It's a Good pleasure to be on. Looking forward to it. Especially as, uh, as you know, I'm a massive boxing fan. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know you You know you super well. As soon as you told me that Dean was going to be on, I was like, what? I was actually heading out, you know, I was heading out to the shop. Because what I normally do, I'm a man, I, um, I've, got my, I've got my set routine. So uh, I'm doing some work from home during the day. Mm. And then I'll have, uh, typically I'll have an afternoon nap. Have my afternoon nap, wake up, have a shower, loosen up, and then I go out for a run. So I've done that, mm. come back from my run. I was actually watching some AFTV stuff because my brother had Anthony Yard on today. Oh, and then man. I got a call from you saying about this. Yeah, man. And then as soon as you said that Dean was coming on, I was like, what? <laughs> okay, okay. Dean's, uh, Dean doesn't probably know this, man, but he's a bit of a hero of mine. You know what I mean? I like how he moved. Mm -hmm. I mean, man, he's he's proper, man. Yeah, and I know with my second guest. I'm not just saying that because he's here, man. Enough love, enough respect. Yeah, man. No, no, trust no, no, Dean's no, no, a real one. Yeah. Anyone who don't know, um, Dean White, my second guest, you know, top guy. Met you at the Arsenal ground. We chopped it up. And yeah, um, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. boxing yeah. expert and um, trainer and, you know, brother of champion boxer, Dillian White. How no, you been no, did you know that this man's actually saved people on a plane? Did you know no, that? I don't rush, you know. We, I've got the questions. <laughs> <right here. laughs> I don't want to. Spoiler alert. Spoiler yeah, alert. Man. So what's been happening, Dean? What you been up to, man? During um, the lockdown? Yeah, just just kind of busy doing the same. Like you see, like this today, I've got a lot of requests today. You know, for um a lot of interviews. I don't even know. I've done a few. I've done a lot. I think I've done um a live earlier, and then after that live, I don't know. I've just had like quite a few different. I think you got me at the um a good time there because I I think IFL was trying to hit me up. Yeah. Um, Pro Beats is trying, wanted to do, they wanted to, a few different people wanted to do stuff tonight. Um, yeah. I still might do more, but obviously it's just depending how these kids are and stuff as well. You know, yeah. if they make up money, then they're not going <laughs> to bed. It's going to be difficult, you know, like, because they're really young anyway. But um, yeah. literally just doing stuff like that, just doing stuff online, doing a lot of lives, doing a lot of um, Skype interviews, and just trying to stay busy and trying to, you know, keep focused on stuff, working on... Um, I do uh, music management as well. So i uh, got a lot of movement going on in that field as well. One of my artists is getting signed. So I'm in the middle of the contracts with the solicitors. Um, and in the boxing, same. i got I got a boy signing with um, Frank Warren. So literally, hopefully, getting the paperwork tomorrow, next week, sign that, and then that will just be out there. So just, just busy anyway, you know what I mean? Just literally busy, trying to get the ones I've got in the gym who... Who are trying to get to the level some of these boys are getting to, just making sure they keep the right mindset mm -hmm. and uh, keeping active and trying to, like I said, seize the moment when their chance comes. You know what I mean? Yeah, for real. Um, how has Dillian been keeping? Obviously, um, you know he had a big fight coming up and that's been pushed back or whatever. Man, how's he? How's he keeping busy at the moment? Still training? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, he's in Portugal at the minute. He's um. He's he's up to and drove himself. I don't know how many hours, bloody a long time. I do know that, and I'm happy yeah. I weren't involved in that big old big old drive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, with, yeah. The, with the dogs, he's got loads of dogs with all these dogs in tow. He <laughs> drove over there, yeah. He, he, no planes over there. He had to drive over. No, yeah, but he, he obviously he wanted to bring the um the dogs, the dogs and and all these cars and that. He's a big car man, so he's got loads of cars. So he's gone over with a team. And I drove over there, and now they've been there for maybe nearly, nearly about two months, nearly. Yeah, about two yeah. months, about two months right now. So, he, he's, uh, Dean, just out of interest, why did they choose Portugal? Um, I don't even know. Maybe um, there's not much. There's not much going on out there in terms of the virus. I know that's low out there. Yeah. Um, so they're quite active. It isn't as locked down as here, so. You know, and he set up a good little thing. I think he's got a good little thing going there. Oh, the magic um, better there, isn't it? So he's he's got a good setup. He's got a nice gym. He's got a house. Obviously, he's got a guest house for the boys. 
who can stay there and then they meet up and they train. So I think he's got a cushy little number there. He's got a bit of sun, probably a bit more sun than here, getting his vitamin D. And uh, yeah, he's just looking strong. Like I chat to him here and there. I spoke to him, I think, a couple of times this week. Um, actually, what I'm talking about, I spoke to him a couple of, I think yesterday or morning, actually. I'm talking rubbish. But you know, like, I can't remember. But some more, you know, I talked to him a bit anyway. Um, I know what he's doing. He's just doing his thing. He's ticking over. He doesn't need much. Um, in, what, it, yeah. You know what? Um, in, I, I see I see Dylan, you know, at my gym. I live in Enfield in North London. And I'll okay, which the monster? Yeah. Huh? What gym, the monster? No, no, this is pure gym. This is pure gym. So okay. I'm, a member, yeah, I'm a member of pure gym. So I was in my local gym in Enfield, right? And yeah. um, I'll tell you a story, and this is a true story. So... I was making my way towards the running machines, right? So <laughs> I, normally, I normally take the machine right at the end. Yeah. Of the road, right? So as I've uh, come out the changing room, I've gone to where the running machines are. The, the, the machine that I normally use, it was occupied. And obviously um, they're running with their face towards the window. So he would have had his back to me. So I looked up now and I saw this big guy. And he was going at a really good pace. I was like, rah, this man, this for a big guy, this man's hammering it, man. I was like, rah. So yeah. I put my bag, because um, I, I sometimes take my belongings in a bag and just put them near the machine. So as I went next to the machine now, he kind of looked to his left. Yeah, he must have thinking, what's this guy doing? So I was just putting my bag there so that when he comes off, I can get the machine. So then... When he turned now, I saw it was Dillian. I was like, rah, it was Dillian White. So I like said, so yelled him up and he was he was all sweated up and doing his thing. So I let him, you know what I mean? But I was like, rah. And that's that I hadn't seen him in person for a long time, but he was putting it yeah. in on the running machine, man. I was I was very impressed. For a big guy, he was really sprinting hard. I was like, rah. Yeah, no, he loves that. Yeah, I, we we trained there a couple of times actually at that same yeah. gym. He's um, got a the cardio, man, trust me. Because the speed he was his man at half his size that couldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, he's an animal. Trust me, he's on it. Like he loves the sprint in the interval sprints. Listen, yeah, one yeah. time at that same gym, we done I think fifty minutes interval sprints. Wow! In there, we, we listen. It looked like we come out of a pool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah. yeah. 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 So yeah, um, I saw Dillian White at the gym tonight. He's going, "What?" I said, "Yeah." I guess the man was putting it in on the running machine, man. He was hammering it. I was like, "Raw." And uh, one thing, you know, he, he he don't play about with his uh dedication to uh, the sport and uh, um, applying himself. He's always been that. Like, sometimes, uh, you know, I used to say you overtrain too much, to be honest. Yeah. But you know, he just he just wants to keep, um, you know, try and keep on the ball, try and keep in a little bit of relative shape. It's hard anyway, you know, trying to keep in shape, keeping yeah, fit. It's, it's, it's two different things, you know what I mean? Um, in terms of if you're looking at, looking aesthetically pleasing and being mm. fit, because, he's, you know, he throws a lot of shots as well. So yeah, sometimes yeah. He, he gets tired. So when you look at people say, oh, he's not fit. But trust me, he throws a lot oh, of man, shots. I can, I can that for a big guy, what I see doing there, and, and I've been around gyms a long, long time. What I see him doing there, most men can't do that. Trust me. No, no. I, half his weight would not have got to them levels. Because I was watching him for a while. Yeah, he is. Now, he don't mess about. He does a... That's what kind of attracted me to it. Because I see this big guy. Yeah. And he's mm. sprinting on the... And he was keeping it up. I was like, bah, who's that? And then it's only yeah. when he turned around now. Then I saw it was him. I was like, wow. I think it's... What do they call it? A death run. I think yeah. it's a death run, man. Yeah. Something mad like that. Yeah, man, you, you're going dead when you finish that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what will, happen, what will happen with the Povetkin fight then? Will they will they rearrange or will he go yeah, as well? At the minute, they've rescheduled it for July the 4th. Okay. Um, obviously, at the minute, they're saying behind closed doors. Potentially, it's going to be in the UK still. But then at the yeah. same time, Eddie's mentioned that it might be in... Um, America also because they're going to open they'll open up a little bit more and uh, they'll be well prepared or better prepared. You know, as you saw on the weekend, they done UFC 249 mm -hmm. uh, behind doors and stuff like that. So they're a little bit ahead of us. They're a little bit ahead of us. You know what I mean? They've got many states and loads of states are starting to open up over there. So uh, mm -hmm. I know just from, you know, reading and talking, um, 
really, I don't go into too much stuff with him anyway. When on the phone, we just chat about other yeah, personal man. things or just you know other stuff. Now, you know what I mean? Uh, mm, Dean, let me ask you something. Yeah, sorry, I don't want to take things over, Curtis. I'm, no, on, man. I'm curious to know what Dean thinks about this. But at the weekend, do you not think that Dana White kind of stole a bit of a march on boxing? Because I'd say so. Listen, because for me, he's. I think it might be a little. Hey, I should have brought my drink, you know. Yo, Curtis, you look like. No, you know, you know. <laughs> it's a long day, you know. I needed, I needed a little bit more time, bruv. You, you are done with me. No, I'm, I'm in parch, mate. <laughs> no, but um, I think he has somewhat, but I think he's just got a bit more. I don't know. Is it what's the word? That maybe I don't know if there's a bit more passion or bizarre or whatever it is. But he was not interested. All this lockdown, too. He's like, listen, buddy. I've got shows yeah. to put on. I'm not interested. Yeah. They had to force him. The broadcaster, the e ESPN, had to force him to back down on his show, like while it was going on. Now the man said, listen, remember, boss. Initially, when he raised the idea, he was talking about yeah. hiring an island, didn't it? Putting the yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. The man said, listen, boss, I'm not dealing with you. Though. I'm going to get my own island. So <laughs> when you're not getting in all these problems, I'm just going over there. I'm going to put on my business. And yeah. my fighters will do what they need to do. We're not interested in yeah. this and lockdown. And on the show, Curtis, right? And it weren't no mm. easy fighters, you know. He had two of the top guys in the game, Tony yeah, Ferguson. Yeah, yeah. And he and it was a success, man. And yeah. now even, even Donald Trump's hailing the man and saying, look, he's an example of, of getting things moving again. So not respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I think, you know, obviously when everyone... Talking, my man went and done it. Yeah, everyone's concerned about you know, this and that. But look, he showed the protocol, obviously, to try and make sure you do all the steps. You've got to get people checked. You know, yeah. certain people wear masks. There's no there's no crowds. There's little things he done. Obviously, mind you, he's got the money to do that. Yeah, so, true. but I'm saying that the British Boxing Board of Control can allow the likes of Matt Trim and Frank Warren, who've got the broadcasters behind them. It's going to be difficult for the smaller show people yeah. to kind of, Mm. to get off the ground. Well, having, because, uh, having said that, I don't know if you know, Dean, but um, there was a show, a boxing show that took place in Nicaragua. About, yeah, I watched, it, I watched it. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking, boy, if them man can do that, why can't we do things in this country? You know what I mean? I think um, Robert Smith, who runs the British Boxing Board of Control, I mean, obviously, got to go through the government and that, but you should be looking at things like that and thinking, you know what? These people have shown that you can put shows on if you've got the right safety measures in place. So, you know. No, no, absolutely. He should be. I know they they put up a few things the other day talking about, um, you know, what they want to implement um, over the next few weeks to bring boxing back. Um, it seems a bit much. It seems similar to what they were talking about. They, but they're talking about putting fight, testing them, putting them up in hotels and this and that. No smaller show people are going to be able to do kind of that. It's definitely yeah, only going to be yeah. the I big guys, the you know what I mean? Though, I think the yeah, fighters yeah. would be on board with that because, so take Dillian, for example. I mean, obviously, Dean, you know him so much better than us. You're his brother and all that. But the Dillian Hold that on. I see and know, right, that man would fight in a telephone booth, you know what I mean? So you're not going to tell <laughs> me that he, <laughs> him fighting yeah, yeah, in front no. of doors, he would fight anywhere. He's a fighting man. He's a genuine yeah. fighting man. So obviously he would prefer to fight in front of a big crowd. We all would. But if you said to him, you can have that fight with Povetkin uh, behind closed doors with all the safety measures in place, he would bite your hand off at that. I'm pretty sure Povetkin probably would as well. They fight. Yeah, no, no. He's, he's, listen, he he don't mind. He's prepared to you know do it anyway. Um, remember, he's a pay-per-view fighter first and foremost, anyway. So, yeah. you know, I don't, if there is a crowd or if there isn't a crowd, he's gonna he wants to fight irrespective, anyway. Yeah. But I mean, that's why him it should still is. do it should do good numbers. If Dillian's about that life, man, he wants to smoke. again. Dillian, everybody, I think that's one of the reasons why uh, everyone loves exactly. him. He's about mm. that life. He, he genuinely wants smoke. Yeah, oh, for real. He wants. Yeah, that no, absolutely. The can man, as he says, you know. Yeah, he's, anyone can get it. He don't duck no one, bro. Exactly. No what does he? What does he have to do to get that world title challenge, man? And and who do you think it's more likely to be? Would it be the Fury Lane or or would it be Josh? Do you reckon which one? 
Do you know, it's, it's right now, there's a few things that, like, if you look at the deck, it all needs to land in position. Right now, you've got the trilogy mm. with Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. There's a lot of talk about um, Deontay Wilder stepping aside. I've heard he's rumoured to be offered $8 million. Um, He's holding out for $10 million. That is a hell of a lot of money to step mm. aside. But those boys are rumoured to be, the Saudis I've heard have offered $10 million to get that fight off the ground. So $10 million is a little bit of a drop in the ocean. No disrespect in the money. It's actually nothing to do with no drop in the ocean. It's a lot of money. But I mean, um, that that step aside money is, is quite big if they if they do offer him that. Then what's going to happen? We'll have the unification fight um, mm. here with those two. And then obviously Dillian's mandatory. His, his position is February 2021. So as long as that goalpost doesn't move, then it's A-OK. -okay. But then if they do do the step aside and then he fights the winner, it's a bit unfair because then again, it's going to go past 2021, you know? Mm. And then he's going to be on the sidelines waiting even further. So, um... Yeah, because they'll yeah, have a rematch clause. Boxing, surely, boxing is a very complicated sport. Yeah, yeah, because because Fury and Josh, if they were to fight, they would surely have a rematch clause. So you'd probably be looking at two fights there, wouldn't you, before exactly. dealing with that's, that's one of the negatives about rematch clauses, man, because, um, you know what I mean, I don't... Like, for example, now, I don't know if you're aware, Curtis, but the IBF, mm. um, they don't have rematch clauses in their contracts because they believe in mandatory defences. So, in other mm. words, if you're in a title, you fight, you got to, within mm. fights, you've got to fight the mandatory, the person who's earned the right to challenge. That's why... I feel very sorry for Dillian, man, because the man's fought his way right up the top of the ladder. He's waiting for his title shot, and then he keeps getting frustrated by these guys having rematches and all this type of stuff. Um, but while we're on that, I would love to know um, what Dean thinks, man, because I'd love to see um, if Dillian can't get a title shot with uh, one of the other guys, I'd like to see him go up against Fury, because I think that would be a great fight, man, because he'd bring it yeah. to I mean, yeah, no, me I had a word with that Fury already when I was in Vegas after his, after his win with um, Deontay Wilder, you know? Oh, right. Mm. Let me yeah, ask you I, a question, uh, right? Cause uh, let me ask you a question and answer me honestly. Because <laughs> this is something that's intrigued me for a while. So, a little while back, um, Dillian and Tyson Fury got into some little beef, some little Twitter beef thing, right? And... Dillian was saying, boy, I knocked you out in sparring. I either knocked out or knocked down in sparring. So you don't have to answer it because I know that these things, what happens in the gym should stay in the gym and blah, blah, blah. But can you say whether that's true or not? Did Dillian deck him in sparring? Well, not being funny, this is something, obviously, I wasn't actually there at the sparring, but he mentioned this years ago. Yeah. Very, very long time ago, you know? Um, so you know, this I isn't asked, new. When he said it, I weren't shocked. This is, Change this is something... I heard like, I don't know, many, many years. I can't really remember how many years, but very, very long time ago. But, you know, obviously you can take some consolation in that. But, I mean, it's sparring, you know, it's just one of them. I it's mean, the fight in itself is a great matchup because it's it wits and puts two people with different styles together. I mean, you know, yeah, I think... Did it happen, though? Say that again? Did it happen? My well, yeah, this is what he said. It's happened, so I'm, you know, I believe him. I don't think he's lying. He said he's done it more than once as well. He, he remember, you know, this, like I said, this might have been five, no, more than five years, maybe two, twelve, two, eight, thirteen, maybe I don't, know, maybe even before that, he was mentioning this many years back. So, um, he's like, you know, listen, he ain't playing about, you know, when he's in there, you know. So I'm not surprised if any of them body shots there licking them man there and folding them up. None of that's surprising. Yeah, because I used to box yeah. myself and I'd see enough man get dropped in the gym. Enough man. Inspiring yeah. can happen to anyone, you know what I mean? So I, Exactly. So I that's what I say. I don't take too much from it. What I do know is, like I said, the styles for me would be good. I think, you know, um, Tyson Fury has got a big body and, and Dylan is the body snatcher. So, you know, like he's going to take great comfort in knowing that he's done good damage before previous. So going into any fight, he'd you'd be feeling more than confident yeah. in his capabilities of doing some damage, you know? That would be a great mm. fight, and the press conferences would be great too. Oh, yeah, you got two, you got two smack chatters. Oh, mate, yeah. that yeah, press man. conference would be a mad thing. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, man. So, yeah, so what do you think of the Povetkin fight then coming up? What, what's your thoughts on the on the Povetkin fight finally? Uh Povetkin, Povetkin's a solid, solid opponent. Personally, you know, like um, mm. I respect what he's done in the sport of boxing. Mm. The man's probably what is he, about forty? I think he's there. Is he either thirty nine, forty yeah, years uh, of age? But uh, yeah, he's, he's solid. Yeah. He's still in there fighting at the top of his game. You know, he's a gold, a gold medalist at the amateurs. He's a former world champion. Solid, solid fight. He even gave AJ quite a few um, mm. troubling moments, disturbing moments, only two years back. So uh, yeah. we know he's definitely got a little bit left. And the Hunter fight has solidified that for me. Hunter, I respect. Mm. You know, a, lot, yeah. for a young, hungry guy. And look, you know, he was virtually on the way out in that fight and he managed to turn the tide around and get himself a draw, which I thought was a, is a great result. I thought it was the right result also. In terms, right. it was like... It was the right result. No, no, no I thought it was. I thought it was. The reason being is, I felt like he he, he buzzed um, Hunter a few times. He did. One of the times, he punched Hunter. Hunter flew into the ropes, and the ropes held him up. Mm-hmm. So, for me, the ref should have counted that as a knockdown, because he was literally out on his feet. Remember when he went into the ropes? Yeah, yeah. And it yeah, kind of yeah. held him up. That should have been a knockdown. So, as far as I... And he, got, he was getting bashed a little bit about at the end of the... Like coming on to it later in that fight because he yeah. what is he's a very slow starter. Yeah. Um. So I felt like uh, adding all those things into the equation, I think the fair fight. I didn't believe any man deserved to go home a loser. Just put it that way. Mm. I must admit, I had Hunter winning, but I I credit Povetkin for the way he came back. Yeah, you've got to give him. Yeah. I mean, look what he did to David Price, man. I nearly half killed him. He, he iced David Price. <laughs> yeah, right. no, time, I was man. talking about David Price, car Back in the days, when we was coming up, David Price was the White Hope, man. They had him as the, the, the golden boy, yeah. bronze Olympic winner with Frank Maloney. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, having him topping the bill. I like David Price. Um, but what it is, is they messed him up fighting Tony Thompson twice, man. That was bad management, man. I know they were looking at him as he was older, he has been past it. But then, man, they, they, man, they weren't past it, man. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. what they should have done, they should have just not done the rematch and made him go back to the drawing board and fight. But my man, they went in, they made him go from fighting, um, what's the white boy for the British title's name? I can't remember. It's an old school guy. He was good. You know the one that, Tyson Fury fought, but kind of lost, and they gave it to Tyson Fury. Oh, yeah, McCoy? yeah, Stan McDermott. What's his name? Stan McDermott, I think his name is. Is that the guy? Stan McDermott, that's it. Uh, he was a bad boy fighter, you know? Yeah, he beat Fury that time, man. That was a dodgy fight. He beat yeah, him. Nah, he, I, 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 uh, McDermott won that fight, the first yeah, he one. Fight, man. Oh, he won it. He won it. I mean, don't yeah, get me wrong, so the ring actually got well beat. But that first yeah, fight, no, that's yeah, he, he definitely got beat. I saw him in the paper talking about it the other day as well. But, yeah, I um, both fights. Yeah, yeah, they were good fight. But he went on to fight David Price. David Price bashed him up, and then he went on to try and fight Tony Thompson, who fought Vladimir Klitschko, fought at world level, fought at bare levels. It, yeah. The jump was too big. They didn't mm. give him the right steps, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he's you. never, he's never, he's never recovered. He's just never recovered, you know. No. No. Obviously, I see you was over there in Vegas for um, the Fury fight. Was it the Fury Wilder one? Like, yeah, I was shocked at the way Fury dealt with Wilder. To be honest, I actually thought Wilder was gonna was gonna beat him. But what did you make of that fight, man? Well, I I, I thought, to be honest, I, I I didn't believe he was gonna do what he'd done. I definitely believed he'd win. I think mm-hmm. he won the first time. If you're a home mm-hmm. fighter. And you get a draw, you know, you know, down deep down that you lost, you know, like just like mm-hmm. you know, we're talking about that bloody Dan was name McDermott fight and stuff like that, you know, hometown. Mm-hmm. You know, when you get the hometown decision, I think that was a hometown decision for Deontay Wilder. He got away, luckily with a draw. And um I just I just was always gonna so back my argue, country, man. You argued that um Tyson Fury was lucky in that fight as well, you know why? The we say in the count. Yeah, man, he got knocked out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what? He was up before the count as far as I was concerned. Everyone's got that, their that opinions, but I think he just sense. about made it. Mm. And look, what you've got to look at is he came back bigger and better and, and arguably won the rest of the round after that. He started thumping up well, after the end of that, that. How does a man who gets knocked out like that get up and do that? Well, I don't mm. you know Great. what. God, God working there, man, because I've never seen a man get knocked out like that and then get up 
And like you say, come back so strong. It was amazing. It's crazy. That was madness. That was man. Recovery, man. And just so, finally on boxing. Uh, what's happening with this Ruiz thing? Dylan and Ruiz seem to be getting into it. I don't know. I don't. I think there was just a little bit of an argy bargy. I don't think there's anything. At first, he wanted to fight him, but it's looking like he just wants to try and get his world title fight after this fight. You know, so I'm not fight. really sure what's what's what, what's planned. Um, but I think that I've heard some whispers that you know they're saying that after this, they just he just wants to try and get his world title shot. If it's AJ or Fury, he doesn't mind. But he's just That's looking for fight, right? whoever's got the belt. This is Ruiz. Word. Yeah, I think they're a dangerous son of a gun, that boy. That'll be a good fight. Yeah, yeah it would. But Reese is good as well, you know what I mean? We've got to mm. give him credit. I know he dropped off the other day, mm. but, you know, he, he's he's still a world-class, you know, talent and a very good fighter. So, yeah, it's a definitely an interesting fight, but I think I that's think the right thing that he needs to do, to be honest. He needs to concentrate on getting his world title shot that man has made bare money at that world title shot. You know the yeah, ones getting rematches yeah. and doing this. That guy made something like 80 million do, yeah. running it back with Joshua with the two fights. So, you know, I suppose Dillian needs his share of the share of the pie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. You know what? I went to the first fight when um Dillian fought um AJ at the O2 man, and he landed a big punch on him in that. I nearly knocked him out, man. He's improved yeah. a lot as a fighter since then, Any man. That, I mean, I don't know for sure, but did Dillian turn down the fight with Joshua um, before he fought Ruiz? Yeah, I think what it is was they offered some money, but what, what they got to look at is, obviously, when you're look, offering someone money or what they believe They're they worth. bring to the table, it's kind of a little bit kind of different. You offered Andrew Ruiz more money who doesn't bring any pay-per-view numbers he, do, he doesn't sell out arenas. He doesn't. He doesn't do good numbers on tickets. Nothing. So when you got to add all of that into the equation, how do you offer the likes of Dillian White four or five million? He makes probably a little bit, maybe less, in the region of that when he's fighting anyway. Just ordinary people now for mm -hmm. a world title opportunity where he's selling out arenas and he's a pay per view fighter himself. His numbers mm -hmm. alone, you should be kind of offering decent numbers because. Both of you that are generating together is gonna, you know, it's gonna be a real sellout mm -hmm. arena. And then I don't think, I think something to do with um the rematch. You know, they was talking about if he lost, um, AJ was saying if he lost, he'd still want the lion's share of. So I think he just didn't like. They didn't like the deal. Yeah. So they're just like, listen, buddy. Hey, you come back when you're a bit more serious. You know what I mean? We're not gonna be. We're not desperate. We're not gonna take. The peanuts you're offering, and you're offering the little man across the road, the little Snickers man, a real <laughs> big cheese. You get me? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, and, and 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 look what happened. It ended up turning around, smoking him, and um, <laughs> rewriting history. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was he didn't get his shot, man. He, it's uh, he's been treated very Absolutely. unfairly. He's been treated very unfairly, man. You know what I mean? So I can understand. Yeah, now, it will come, man. You know what? One thing, you, you, if you keep knocking the door, it will either open or it will fall down. So, you know yeah. what I mean? He's got to keep keep his head straight, keep the right mentality so, and plugging away. If I'm being honest, what I worry about with Dillian is, is that, um, and I've seen this happen so many times in boxing, is that you climb the mountain, you're beating all these guys on your way to a title shot. You're frustrated that you're not getting the title shot. And then all of a sudden, you could just lose focus, have a bad night, lose and then your title dream is gone so 100 percent. you know I, I i absolutely agree with you that's why it's imperative that he does stay sharp and he has people around him that can say that to him you know and uh give him that and kind of just pull his coat and i pull his coat quite a lot anyway to be honest with him yeah, yeah, and yeah. obviously he's got guys that are on to him anyway so but like that's you're saying you're right though because sometimes look you know what i think with that ferguson and gagey fight the other day i think Ferguson was saying, look, I've been in camp since last year, November. Yeah. Mm. Look, I've just been training, training, fighting, warrior after warrior. I've come in there. I'm not even going to give no excuses on that. I lost, but, you know, it was just a long camp. And sometimes that can get to you. You know what yeah. I mean? I feel like he's in camp him. waiting for such a... You know what I mean? He was calling out Khabib for the longest time. And for whatever reason, he couldn't get the Khabib fight. So the well, that fight was made five times, you know, that yeah. fight, you know? Yeah. And... For many things, 
it kind of just went under the, you know what I mean? Like Gage, or Gage, or whatever his name. I was, like, quite surprised. But I think... His hands were good, innit? Yeah. His, his boxing head. was good. He turned yeah. up, my man. Mush him up. Yeah. Hey, listen, no, I, I was surprised, you know. Tony Ferguson was favourite for that fight, wasn't it? Hey, listen, Ferguson... <laughs> Ferguson, man. The man used his blows not chin like it was real granite, you know, but he, he ran out of <laughs> he ran out of diesel. <laughs> he's been on a long unbeaten streak and he's been calling out Khabib and Conor McGregor and all them man the time. And he ain't been he able can't... to fight and he's been beating all these other guys. And this is what I'm saying. He fought this guy, he was expected to beat Gage quite comfortably, and then all of a sudden he get beat. You know what I mean? That's what can happen. Just when you're you know at that what, level, when you're at that level, if you're even five percent off what you should be mentally, that could be the difference. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, I agree with that. What what I'll say to that? That training you want, if you're not, and that's what happens to a lot of fighters, they train hard, and then they fight somebody, and you think, yeah, it's a given that they're going to win. But sometimes, if you're and not, then, and then they lose, this happened many times through history. Yeah. They yeah. Joshua against Ruiz the first time. He wasn't quite at that level. Whereas Ruiz yeah. now, thinking, yeah, this is my big night. I put everything on the line. And then you saw what happened. You know? No, no, absolutely. Um, what I was going to say is, though, Ferguson took it for granted. He put his chin on the line too much. He yeah. took way too much punishment. Right. You yeah. can't go in any sport taking that kind of punishment and think you're going to get away with it. I'm very sorry, my friend. I'm very, very sorry. Them kind of lick there. <laughs> but, <laughs> listen, <laughs> hey, did you see? Did you see the stumbling in the um the end round when he got the lick? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. must be brain damage he's got there. Trust me. Well, you know what? They said he, his <laughs> eye socket got fractured with that shot. Huh? His eye socket got fractured. Yeah, see it there. I knew something was going on. Yeah, man. So yeah, I man, knew I something was going on. Because the people them are asking for Arsenal talk, man. So I'm going to quickly get into oh, yeah, the Arsenal. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, but I had to talk boxing with you first, man, because I've been waiting to get you on. What What do you make of um, Arsenal this season, Dean, man? It's been a it's been a difficult season for Arsenal, man. What it's do you make? A, of hey, listen. Just like the rest of our 2020, we need to throw this whole thing in the trash. Yeah. And uh, let's be, forget like this has ever happened. I, you know, like for me, though, man. Arsenal man, but I'm like an old school Arsenal man, if truth be told. Like all this yeah. new thing what's going on is is with us all over the shop. I don't really I do watch it, but it's just you know, it's heartbreaking seeing man down there. I'm not gonna lie, I'm used to the good old days, the glory days. That's all I can really talk about. That's all yeah. I've got to hang on to. I can't I don't want to talk about no Champions League, Europa, down yeah. and out, six, seven down. It's just madness, brother. I remember a time we used to it was a given. One yeah. and one and two, what three lowest one, two, what you understand? Yeah, it was yeah. up there now. Different times, sadness. You got all the yeah, little foreign teams up there just duffing us in. Yo, for real. It was as a man united every year, one. Yeah, man united. Imagine that. I was talking about Alex Ferguson today because I used to like his analogy, man. Listen, guys, it's squeezy bum time now. We're gonna do our four four two and set our stall out. Shut up, shop, mate. You yeah, scozy yeah. up the top, score the goal. We're gonna lock up shop. <laughs> He's the way. He was cold, though, still, you know. Yeah, they were serious, man. They were serious. Yeah, them time there, Man United was a madness, bro. Them mm. man, they used to score in the 90th minute, like like drinking water. Them man yeah. was horrible, bro. You played them, you better play till the whistle's done, bro. Mm. Fergie time, innit? Fergie time. Yeah, them yeah, he was good. What do you, you make? Know, I think it's going to be a long time before we're back in the Champions League, man. Oh, for real. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I really don't know where we're going to go. But obviously, you know, it is a lot of this money, you know. Obviously, we've got, you've got a lot of these foreign investors in Man City, obviously, Chelsea, you know, Tottenham doing their thing. I have to say, you know, obviously, it is a bit of that. But we're just not, we're not being able to get, compete financially with these people. I know they've been doing things hmm. and they're in a bit better stable position than a lot of these teams. But at the same time, man, we need to compete on the pitch, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. We need... Um, I know for a long time, for years, we've been suffering anyway with defence and and mm. goalkeepers, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? So we've always had good attackers, midfielders and whatnot, but we've always been lacking. We've we brought in some mad guys 
Where was Kashoni? Was it Kashoni or whatever his name is? Mm, yeah, he's left now. Yeah, yeah, he's gone now. But I mean, where was he? Was he like a defender? So he did a little thing. Yeah, he was all right for a bit. Yeah, 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 you know, like, but what I mean is, when you go back and you look at like the old school guard, Keon mm. Adams, really boy, that was a really good old school guard. You know that. Listen, mm. that man was so Campbell. Yeah. We've been out of the loop since them days of truth be told. You know what I mean in terms of defense. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've turned into an era where it's snobby, isn't it? Like, they're trying to buy the, the foreign defender with a fancy name and a nice haircut and them things. When sometimes you just need the hard man who can just mop up at the back, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, but it's it's crazy, man. But what do you make of, obviously, with... The problem is, is that, um, and we've talked about it... Which one? Arsenal's yeah. problem is, is that um, the squad we have at the moment is quite third there, isn't it? And I don't think that this season or next season or anytime soon, we're going to have the money to compete in terms of the transfer market, getting the best players. I think that's going to be a problem. I mean, mm. look, I can't even think yeah. of the best player now. So yeah, no, Arsenal can't compete in that direction. Yeah, Obviously, right. listen, these people, look, even Newcastle are in talks with one of the shakes to buy the club. Listen, we're going to left. We need, we need, we need, we need some big money. Back in this thing, mm. you understand, yeah. and that's the only way I see us competing. And now we, we we became a selling club a long time ago, so people just look at us like we get we got the talent. They'll buy them from us for big money and and just run off and bolster their team and, and win things. You get me? So you only have to look at Curtis. You only have mm. to look at the way the club's handling the Abamyam situation, and that will tell you everything you need to know about Arsenal. Don't you think? Mm. Yeah, for real. We're being linked again with selling our best player. The way you've handled that situation, and that tells you a lot. Uh, and I think you were saying the other day, if you're a Thomas Party and you've been linked with a club and you see how they're moving in terms of what they've done with Aubameyang, you're thinking to yourself, boy, even though I love the, I like the look of the club, realistically, for the, for the betterment of my, the long-term betterment of my career, do I even want to go there? You know I mean, what I mean? No yeah. champion in football. They're selling their best players. And you go put yourself in that environment. You know what I mean? It could hold you back as a player. So, mm. I, yeah. they're in a real transition stage right now, man. The as thing is... With this coronavirus pandemic as well. It's going to be... The next couple of years could be... Uh, I don't know, man. I don't want to sound like a real naysayer, man. But it's going to be, <laughs> going to be very difficult. The thing is, 10, 15 years ago, people were desperate to go to Arsenal. Now, now they're leaving Arsenal. To, you know, we're yeah. a stepping stone for people to go to bigger clubs now, Barcelona. Exactly. And, and, you know, but uh, we need new owners, man. Like you said, we need we need some, you know, you go in Saudi Arabia for the boxing. We, you need to bring one of them, man, back to come and buy Arsenal or something, man. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm telling you they need that kind of like, that like man from Abu Dhabi. Mm. The sheikhs out of Saudi Arabia with the big money to step in and say, "Yo, come with us, tie up this business and start spinning." Sam Cronky, who owns um, Arsenal, he's one of the richest men in America. I was, I was looking at something the other day. The man's got sports franchises in every sport in America. He's mm. got he's, he owns teams in the MLS, right in the NFL, in the NHL, and the NBA. You know what I mean? The man, he's, so he's not going to want to sell Arsenal because he knows that if he can ride this little storm through, Arsenal is, is, um, is a money-making machine. You print money if you own that club. Because look at the stats. Since Kroenke, and you can go and confirm this on Google or whatever, since he acquired the club, Stan Kroenke has not put a penny of his own money into Arsenal. That tells you everything, man. And he's <laughs> of his own money in. That's cow. Yeah, he's looking at Arsenal. It's a strictly business relationship. He's not mm. financially committed to the club. It's only since they had this coronavirus now he's talking about he's going to make a cash injection. That's because he was worried about the negative publicity attached to furloughing. You know what I mean? Mm. That's yeah. what. Yeah, I'm going to slip a, little, slip a little money into the club to bail him out through the furlough team. But he knows he's going to get that once football starts up again. He's going to make that back in weeks. Yeah. 
Hey, Dean, you know, I want to talk to you. What, what do you make about, because um, we were talking about this on our show today, what do you make about football, like, coming back now? Do you think it's too soon for football to come back with all this corona thing, or do, or well, do you think? Do you know, obviously, football's got a lot of money generating in football, so I mm. think for them to do the test, to you know, for the team and the staff ain't going to be too mad. I don't know. I don't know. People are making out that, I don't know how this this the virus is airborne or whatever. I'm not even you know like I don't think it is, but they say you know if someone's got it, then it obviously it can be passed on to someone else. But once you do the test, I think if it's closed environment, um, in terms of just no fans in the stadium, um, mm. and then everyone gets tested, I think it would be alright to start off and just see where we are and slowly progress because obviously they've taken the big step to lock the whole country down. Um, there's loads of talk about many cases, this and that. But what what it is is we never hear of people. Um, they never talk about the people surviving and the people, you know, recovering mm. from this. I, I saw something in Senegal the other day. They've got less resources, but they seem to be showing a lot more recovery cases than they do here in the UK and in many places across the world. You know what I mean? So for me, I don't know if it's all just doom and gloom, just these lot with their tell live vision over here. I don't want to go into that. Too much, but um I just feel like, you know, I think there's I think there's room for us to test the waters, let the let everything open up slowly, do it behind closed doors, and just feel feel everything out over the next few months. Um mm. you know, what's it gonna I don't know what's gonna happen. Like what they believe it's just gonna maybe we're gonna have another wave of some sort. I don't know. Um but I just feel like, you know, at the end of the day, all we can do is try and try and make the necessary steps to get society back to working and running order. Because right now, a lot of people are suffering. There's mm. many jobs being lost for bare, bare people. Uh, the economy is on the verge of being crashed. It's it's not, it's actually gone left. It's not even going left. It's gone left. It's gone you know already. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, Kalori, yeah. you're similar with your opinion, aren't you? You think... They should try and come back. Yeah, listen, I'm a, I'm one of those guys in life, man. I'm a I'm a glass half full as opposed to glass half empty. And and listen, I don't want to um, see people rush back too early and put their lives in unnecessary risk. But I agree with Dean, and at some point, we have got to, as a country, as a society, as a people, start trying to. Um, get on with living our lives again, you know what I mean? And sport is an integral part of that. Um, so I'm in favour of Project Restart. Um, they've got to be careful. They've got to introduce the right safety measures, take all the necessary precautions. But I think um, it's a good thing that they're doing this, you know what I mean? Because um, we've got to start living life, man, you know what I mean? Because, listen, mm -hmm. I've been in lockdown now for, what, seven, eight weeks? At, at what point do we start getting the country moving again, man? There's no vaccine for this virus yet. So when all these people are saying this is too soon, that's too soon, I hear that. But when are we going to start living life again? Are we never going to get out again? What, exactly. What, what's the and I think that's I think I think that's their their job, if truth be told, yeah. that because yeah. that I don't know that vaccine thing. I'm not really in all that vaccine business anyway. Yeah. But I mean, like you said earlier, right now we need to make life. moves anyway. We've we've done we've done the best thing we could, but reality, I think what they should have done is they should have shut the airports. From when they done the lockdown is when they should have shut the airports. Yeah. Boris Johnson doing that now is ridiculous. Eight weeks late, eight weeks too late. Mm. They should have done it like everyone else did, closed up the borders and put everyone in quarantine when they come into the country. I think that would have that would have probably helped us quite a lot at the time because there was people coming from way, many different countries. And who knows what them people were bringing into this place? Not yeah. being funny. I know, like, obviously, I came from Vegas and I, I was a little bit unwell. I'm not saying it was that. It probably could have been that, but I don't know. You know what I mean? But a lot of people was in Vegas um, was sick at that time. Um, and yeah, I came back and I, I had something for about, about four days. I didn't feel too clever. But I mean, race like, festival. say that again? Remember, about a week before we did lockdown, they had the Cheltenham Race Festival. Remember? Yeah. And a lot of people saying that that was ill-advised for the government to let that go on. You know what I mean? I think, to be so, honest, it's right. History is going to judge that Boris and the Conservatives did a very poor job. And I'm not trying to sound mm. political. 
but the numbers don't lie, man. At the end of the day, right, we we caught on too late, man. You know what I mean? We saw what was happening in Italy and Spain. And I think that in Britain, this is my opinion, by the way, I just think that we were a little complacent. I think it kind of took us off guard. Where if you look at someone like Germany now, the reason why they have been so far ahead of the game compared to us is that they, they saw things emerging early and they acted accordingly and they got their testing in place and all the rest of it. And that's why they've been, now everyone's looking at Germany as the model country in Europe. Whereas us now, we've got the most deaths in Europe. Even, even though the virus came to us later than all of them other countries. Mm, you know what? We haven't done a very good job. You know what I mean? That's the truth. I'm not trying to be political, but mm. numbers don't lie, man. No, they don't. But Germany's got Germany's got good um doctors and healthcare facilities over there anyway. They've yeah. got you know, Germany and India or Pakistan have got most of the best doctors in the world and stuff. Um, but saying that, it doesn't take much to say we could have closed the borders and got checks, got yeah. you know them to you know test people for the, the the virus, and they didn't. They didn't do that. They're starting to talk about that now, eight weeks down the line, when most of the country's actually getting over stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, what I they've had or people have passed on comparisons, right? But I'm sure you saw some of the stuff that was circulating on social media yesterday, Curtis, regarding mm. the Caribbean. And, and look at the death. How low the figures are. Yeah. I mean, like Jamaica, right? 2.9 million people. I think that, and a, a country nowhere near the level of resources that we have in this country. They've only had nine deaths. You know what I mean? We, what, we, what's our current death rate? It's, it's spiraling out of control almost. Yeah. But yeah, over here, I'm not too sure. They're, they're talking about the deaths and the tolls and the numbers. I'm not even sure if they're actually genuine numbers, not being funny. I've heard too many stuff about, you know, that they, they're just saying people should, if they've got pneumonia or this symptom or that, just call it the yeah, coronavirus and, yeah, yeah. and sign them off. So mm. I can't even believe the stats. I think there's a greater, bigger agenda than what they're leading on to and saying. But hey, listen, that's a different topic and conversation all in itself. Yeah, for real. For real, but, but I am um, at some point. I would like. I mean, listen. We don't want it to happen too early, because um, if we start opening up too soon, then you run the risk of a second wave that will just overwhelm everybody yeah. in the NHS. But I do think at some point in the not too distant future, once um, we emerge out the worst of this, then the next phase should be thinking: How can we? restore things to a certain normality, you know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. I'm not mm. saying, let's go back to what we were doing before March, because obviously that's ridiculous. But what I'm saying is, you look at the situation, you assess it, you see where you can introduce certain measures to make things workable and move forward from there. So yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, for real. But yeah, I appreciate you guys coming on. I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, we talked a little bit of football, mostly boxing tonight. But um, you know, we got Dean on, so we had to talk boxing and chop it up a little bit. Appreciate you coming on, Dean, man. What's what? What are you up to? What are you up to for the rest of the lockdown? What are you doing? Where can the people find um, you on socials and that? The same, man. My my days are the same, man. I just try and get out, get me a little exercise, train with the boys. Yeah. I train with different boys on different days and stuff, and then um just with the kids really, you know what I mean? And just taking it easy. Um, and just trying to stay healthy, man. I take my vitamins, boil up my bush them, eat my garlic, my raw garlic, my ginger, everything raw. And I make it in tea as well. I, I try and make sure I, I take a lot of stuff to, you know, um, make sure the toxins are coming out, keep my blood yeah, you're building you know, up nice you. and fresh, yeah, you know what I mean? But... I'm, I, I was at the. I went. I went and bought some more bushes yesterday, man. So I just try and stay on. There's loads of different things you can take. I take iodine, iodine for toxins as well. Um, mm. There's just many things. I, I'm just trying to stay as healthy as I can. You know what I mean? And make sure I don't put on too much weight before yeah, this um, really. lockdown done. <laughs> Yo, for real, man. And Laurie, man, big up for coming on. First time I've yeah, had you on. Special, man. Yeah, it's, um, I've always wanted to. I've seen you know, a few times. Yeah, you know, what I mean, we've like shook hands and spoke, exchanged pleasantries, but it's been great to 
It's been an honour, actually, to be on the same... Um, oh, thanks for having me, guys, man. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, My volume you. went a little bit, so I can't even hear you properly. You know like <laughs> when people phone you and then it comes back in? That's why I've got to keep doing that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Yeah, some man. guy phoned me and messed up my volume, man. But <laughs> listen, I just about can hear you. Laurie, big up yourself, Curtis. Yeah, man, Thanks again. To, uh, when yeah, when we get back to some kind of normality, man, I look forward to seeing you at one of the shows and we can have a proper time. Yeah, man. Li listen, make sure you just look out and yell me up anyway. Yeah. yeah, man, yeah, man. yeah All yeah. right, guys. Listen, take care. Enjoy the evening. Yeah. yeah? Everyone, everyone watching, subscribe to the channel, like, comment, let us know what you think. Take care. We'll be back next time. Take care. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye.